Are you looking to start off your luxury journey? Well, start it off the right way. Hello, darlings, and welcome back. I'm Bim Bim Alade Jenna, and today I'm gonna to be giving you all my tips and tricks on how to start your luxury journey off the right way, avoid the mistakes I made, and let's get into it. So here are my top 10 tips for starting out your luxury journey off the right way. Now I have been into luxury, I have started collecting luxury for the past four years now and I've probably amassed quite a decent collection I would say over um oh I think like maybe 20,000 pounds or something around that um amount um that's in probably resale value so um there is some give and take there but I just wanted to share with you how to start off the right way. I know that starting luxury can be quite a daunting experience and finding something that you love, but also you have a bit of wiggle room can be quite difficult. So this is my top, 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 top number one tip. Do not buy shoes if you're starting out your luxury journey. Just don't do it, okay? <laughs> shoes are just not your best friend when it comes to buying luxury. And that is mostly because they get damaged so, so easily. You might not be quite there on sizing yet. And realistically, I know that the price point is really inviting. You can get shoes from anywhere from 300 pounds to about 700 pounds if we're looking at Jimmy Choo. Um, even some, even some um, Louboutins are around that price range. Um, even some Louis Vuitton shoes are around that price range, especially Gucci. But you just want to avoid shoes. They get damaged so, so easily. I have come on here plenty of times to show you guys how damaged my Louis Vuittons are. And I get them repaired like every other scratchy down there, really. Um, so I would just avoid it. Also, because they get damaged so easily, they don't actually tend to resell that well. So I would just say, just just don't do it. Avoid the stress and the trouble of getting designer shoes. It's just not worth it. Especially because you don't know how you're gonna baby those shoes because it is quite expensive and buying your first luxury purchase, it can be difficult to know how you're gonna react to that and if you're gonna baby that or not. Second tip is that if you're looking for something at a quite affordable price point, SLGs are your best friend. So SLG stands for small leather goods, that's your belts, your shoes, your wallets, that sort of thing. They are your best friend. You can get anything from between, I would even say 100 pounds to about 500. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't spend anything above maybe 600 pounds on an SLG. I just don't think that they're necessarily worth that much money but they can be your great introductory price point. Also, SLGs tends to be key holder. I wear my key. Thing now and I can't even wear it. And I fall into that trap, like if I would buy new makeup brushes, I tend not to use them until I've bought like new makeup brushes, which doesn't make sense. But it's, it's a thing that definitely happens. So just be cautious of that. Also, they tend to resell very, very well because there are a lot of other people looking in that price point. So just, just understand that SLGs can be your really, really good friend if you're looking at under about a thousand pounds they can be great um even under 500 pounds just to you know just to get your foot in the door and also you can still buy it in store and have that luxury experience you don't have to go resell or um the vintage route and my third tip is neutrals are your friends now <laughs> if you're going to be buying your first luxury purchase do not get a crazy funky color. Do not get reds. Do not get orange. Do not get yellow. Do not get pink. 
I don't care if you're like the life of the party bright pink person, just don't do it. If you're life of the party, love a bit of color, just get a white bag. I feel like white or black goes with everything. Browns are cool, neutral colors. If you're gonna get blue, get like a navy blue or something like that. Don't go over the top on color on your fav um on your first luxury purchase. It's a recipe for disaster because pairing colors can be quite difficult in a lot of people's wardrobes and you don't want to buy something and then be like oh okay but i can't wear it with this and i can't wear it with that and you can't wear it with that after you spent so much money on it just just avoid it dark and neutral colors are your best friends but very if you're gonna go for a white bag or a lighter cream bag just be very aware of color transfer that is something that can definitely just it can make you not want to wear your bag anymore or your item. Just be very, very aware of colour transfer. I think that that's one of the things that just kills everybody when it comes to light luxury items. So don't wear them with um, jeans, like newly, newly purchased jeans that hasn't been through the wash a couple of times. Tend to have colour transfer. Um, leather jackets, other leather goods tend to have colour transfer, so just be very, very mindful of that. So my fourth tip is to stick to £2,000 or under. Now, I think that that is a pretty good budget. Also, because of the recent times, like with the price increases and stuff like that. So that basically means that Chanel, Hermes and um, Dior are out of the running when it comes to £2,000 or under in most of their um, collections and items and things. Um, but I just think for your own sanity, just stop. I think £2,000 for the most average person is a lot of money. Anything above that is even more, more money. So, and also you just don't know how you're gonna react to spending that much money. I know for me, it was quite daunting spending three thousand pounds to buy my Dior bag and if I didn't have my Gucci bag um or any other bags before that I think my Dior bag was my second ever bag I bought if I didn't have a Gucci bag some shoes and stuff I know that I would be like I'm spending three thousand pounds on what like huh excuse you not me <laughs> like I think that just be very conscious and so I think that £2,000 or under would just be a very, very good um, idea for most people. And if you're looking for any suggestions, make sure to watch my £2,000 and under bags to buy video right here. So tip number five is be very, very conscious on hardware. So if you wear a lot of gold jewellery, a silver hardware bag is probably not your best option and vice versa champagne gold hardware that chanel does is quite good for like a mix in between gold and silver but just be quite conscious especially if you're going for like quite a yellow gold and if you wear a lot of silver jewelry sometimes it just can, doesn't really look nice so definitely be conscious of wearing different metals um also be aware that some of these gold gold tends to tarnish whereas silver tends to be more resilient because that is the underlying color of um the metals so just be cautious of that i think that these sorts of things are just like little things to be quite wary of when you're starting out if you've got hundreds of bags to choose from, it doesn't really matter. It, to be honest, even if you have five bags to choose from with all different um, hardware colours, it doesn't really matter. But if you're just going for your first one, I would say probably stick to the colour that you wear most in jewellery, which is either gold or silver. If you're a rose gold girly, I'm sorry for you because most bags don't have rose gold hardware. <laughs> so. So I'm regular, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. Tip number six is be careful of your climate. So if you live in the UAE or somewhere where it's like very desertish, 
be careful because a lot of sun damage can happen to your bag. So if bags sit out in the sun for quite a long period of time, it can affect and change the color and the texture of the bag. So just that's just something to be conscious of and mindful. If you live in quite a rainy climate or quite a cold climate like the UK, I would suggest going for something with canvas. So Hermes does canvas in their her bag, but I think that's a bit out of the price range. Um, but also Gucci does canvas, um, Louis Vuitton does canvas and Prada does nylon. So just be conscious of the different climates and what bag would be most suited to that. Because the thing is like, of course the UK has sunny days and of course, well, I don't know if the UAE has sunny, rainy days, but I'm sure rain happens every once in a while <laughs> over there. But if you have a range of bags, that's great. But if you only have one or two, sticking to one that fits majority of the year is just better for everybody. I think that's better for you and you'll get your cost per wear out of your item. My seventh tip which is the most i know it's probably the most outrageous one but it's your risk assessment now if you live in a predominantly i wouldn't say dodgy but just where thefts and things occur very commonly be very very careful of whether or not you choose to wear monogram or not to be honest, in recent years, monogram has kind of been seen as kind of tacky in sense of there's a lot of fakes. So probably people just think your bag is fake, especially if you're like out in like Peckham Market with your um, your Gucci bag or your Louis bag with like bold monogram. Most people think it's fake. So maybe there's not a risk of robberies or something like that. But if you're you're going out with your Hermes or your Birkin or Kelly's, you know, rap songs and things like that have made these bags a lot, lot more popular to the average person, I would just be very conscious of your risk assessment. I think Saint Laurent does a good job of only having quite small logos or having logos where if you turn it on the other side, you actually can't see that it's a designer bag or something like that. I think just be very conscious of your risk assessment and whether or not you're likely to get robbed because you know, your life is not worth. Talks about this a lot. Um, the fact that she doesn't go out with her um, big, big um, Chanel bags anymore because she finds them a risk, um, like a risk to take them out because of like people who are robber, um, like robbers and stuff. And she doesn't even live in London. So that tells you something. Um, but just be mindful of these things. My eighth tip is personal style. So if you are into, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I like quite like the classic style. So I would be looking at bags probably from YSL, Prada to a lesser extent, um, Chanel Dior, those sorts of, those sorts of brands because they tend not to be as loud. To be honest, Gucci in recent times has done a really, really good job of kind of toning down their logo mania. I very much like um, the Gucci bamboo bag and I do love the Gucci um, 1961 Jackie. I love that bag. So I would just say like, consider your personal style. If you're more of like a streetwear, edgy girly Prada is your best, best friend. If you like a bit of logo mania, flashy, 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 I, Louis Vuitton is a great brand to go through. Everything is covered in monogram or some type of LV. So I think over there is great. If you're a bit of middle of the road, Gucci can be a nice comparison to go to. They have some things that have a lot of logos. They've got some things that, you know, are quite like understated leather-ish goods. So just be aware of your personal style. Don't get something that you think is cute, but you probably won't wear in your day-to-day -day life. Don't do that. My ninth tip is be very conscious of the weight. So for example, I know that the book tote from Dior tends to have this issue where it's quite heavy. And so people don't wear it out as much. They mostly just use it for travel, which is kind of like the worst thing because, you know, like after you put all your travel stuff in there, it's probably gonna be even heavier, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't know about that. But um, I probably get one for travel though. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Um, 
but definitely be conscious and aware of the weight of these bags. Some of them can be extremely heavy. I know that the Bottega Veneta um, pouch bag with chain is a very heavy bag as well. So if you're looking at these designer bags, I think just be conscious of the weight because no one wants to be carrying kilos um, on their shoulder, right? Like no one wants to. My last and final tip is to be very conscious of the size. So my rule of thumb is that if I'm gonna buy a bag, it has to fit a phone. If I'm gonna buy a pair of shoes, it has to be below an 85 heel, um, unless it's a block heel, and then I can probably go up to like 100, 110 centimeters. Just be very conscious of the size and the fit of these items. You don't wanna buy a bag and then realize it doesn't fit a phone and then you'll you don't wear clothes that has pockets all the time so then you're just like oh what do i do am i gonna hold my you don't want to go through all of that fast so just make sure that you go in store you feel that weight of that bag and you also see if all of your stuff will fit in it and so that's the end of this video make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one darlings kisses